Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. You're listening to A Bite Of, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and we enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble, the final nibble of Percy Jackson because they haven't announced the season two. Yet, as of when we're recording this, because we're recording this early, if they've announced it already, yay! If not, <sighs> come on. I don't know why they're making us wait so long. No idea. They're sending these kids across the country nonstop, and they're like, still no season two yet. Oh my God. I was so upset when I found out that they had the Percy was here, and you get to be at the Empire State Building and take photos at the top of it, and we were just there. The day before. Literally. Ugh. We were driving and you literally went, hey, look, there's the Empire State Building. I have a photo of Ugh. it. Like, I literally took a photo of the Empire. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Missed opportunities. It's fine. Such is life. <laughs> so, a couple of announcements. Mm. Some programming reminders, if you will, because it's very exciting. We have a very exciting thing coming up after this. We had so many great opportunities with Percy Jackson. Thank you, Disney. Thank you, everybody involved with that. Um, Sad that it's over, but we were actually invited to go see Argyle early at the Universal, Universal, I was going to say studios, Universal offices in the city, hence why we were there before Percy was there. But this week on Friday, we have a review of Argyle coming out and an exclusive interview with Matthew Vaughn, the director of Argyle, who also directed Kingsman and Layer Cake and all of those amazing movies. Uh, so. That's going to be fun. How do they get reminded that those are happening? Oh, there are so many ways that they can get reminded that those things are happening. They should follow us on all social media platforms. They should subscribe on whatever their favorite podcast platform is. And they should join our Discord as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All amazing ways. And then just throw some stars because we're asking you to do so much. Just throw some stars. <laughs> <laughs> that is maybe the easiest thing. That is. You, yeah. you just tap it. Yeah. We're on our way to 200 reviews. So throw some reviews. We may have a um, Percy Jackson inspired giveaway coming up. So if you've been waiting to do a review, well, there's something coming up. So maybe if you've left a review, you're going to be added into that giveaway. It's mm -hmm. fun. Ooh, mm -hmm. So many fun things. Um, so now we're in the final episode, episode eight of Percy Jackson. Spoiler warning. Massive spoiler warning for the first book and for the first whole season. So, yeah. All right. Go. Let us officially take a bite of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, episode eight, The Prophecy Comes True. Directed by Jet Wilkinson and written by Craig Silverstein, Percy sticks his toes in the sand and his sword in the heel of a god to retrieve Hades' helm. He makes a personal delivery to his uncle on Olympus, where his father appears to put a stop to the god of gods, making his nephew a dead demigod. Mm -hmm. Camp Half-Blood celebrates, and Percy discovers that all the pieces of the prophecy were true, and a friend is actually a foe. Oh, my God. Insane. They were all over the place in this episode. It's it's a lot. I think with like, so the whole point of the, the show was like them going from one end of the United States to the other. And in this one, they're this way and they immediately go to the other side. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of fun, but there's a lot to unpack here because it's the culmination, right? It's the beginning of the story and also the end of the first chapter, mm -hmm. essentially. So there's a lot to unpack, but hot off the heels of last week's episode, we saw Percy get back on the beach with his friends, but Ares was there waiting for him. Adam Copeland, Edge, he came back for <laughs> one last fight and it was a glorious fight. This dude was chewing the heck out of these lines. They were, they had these close ups of his face and his teeth were gnashing the entire time. I could feel his warlord fury as he was talking to Percy. Oh, I loved it. it. It was fun to see him because he's funny, right? And his portrayal of Ares is kind of goofy and like not what you would expect of the God of War, but. We got to see the actual God of War side and that rage and that fury and also trying to strategically come out on top. Mm. Adam Copeland did a great job. Yeah. Very excited. He really did. And I mean, obviously, this isn't going to be the last that we're going to see of him. 
which is really, really great. Unless there was only one season. <laughs> Stop it. Stop putting that out into the universe. I'm, <laughs> I'm not putting it out there. I'm trying to make them feel bad. <laughs> it's like the secret. It's like the more you think something, the more power you give it. Oh. So we keep saying it. We're, we should say this is the last time we'll see him for season fun. Season fun. <laughs> season one sure was fun. Uh, but when we see him in season two again, that'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe um, he'll have his, um, you know, fan famous uh, skin cycle. <laughs> you had to bring it up. It's the final episode of the season. Before <laughs> we left. I'm not going to become a meme this time again. Do it. Do it. <laughs> so the, the fight was really cool, right? And in this beginning scene, I really like it whenever they, you know, go back or call back or show us a scene that happened prior to the journey starting. So we see Luke mm -hmm. and Percy training and that's how Percy got good with the sword because Luke is really good with the sword. But they talk about the laws of combat and how the gods have to usually abide by those rules, but you can use those rules to your advantage as a demigod. And so Percy challenges the god of war to single combat. Go on, Percy. Yeah. You, you do it. You can see Annabeth and Grover's jaws just drop. Annabeth like, was like, um, well... <laughs> He's been doing this for maybe a month if we're being generous. Okay, okay. I mean, this is just what we're doing. It's fine. How many camp beads do you have? None? Okay. None? You're great. Yeah. <laughs> just a mysterious empty string around your neck? Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, this is this is going to go really well. Uh, the fight itself was really cool, right? It, they start the fight, and I love it whenever they use a camera that is moving with them. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was relatively short. I wanted a little more because this is the finale, right? And like... I was hoping for just a little more visually amazing. And I loved the part where he picks up Percy and just slams him yeah. down. I was like, oh, that's his uh, wrestling. Base. Yes, totally. <laughs> I mean, there's even a part where he just knocks Percy clear across the beach. And I couldn't help but audibly go, whoa, yeah. and just because he went flying. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is a god battling a 12 year old child. <laughs> Of course, he would send him <laughs> flying like a mile down the beach. The part where they're fighting and Ares is able to disarm Percy and Riptide goes away. There's a point where like Percy's face is like, <laughs> wait, what do I do with that? My sword. Uh, yeah, because that's terrifying, right? When he has this like giant broadsword, he's towering over you and it's like, OK, I have my sword. I'm comfortable with it. Now I don't have that. Mm -hmm. But as these journeys usually go. The child coming into their power, the sea mm -hmm. will always be there for him. And I love how usually, like when these fights happen, right? I love it that the sea is always there or a body of water because that's what he needs. He needs to use it. But to see him rising up when he was knocked down and that wave building up only behind him, not like a full wave. It was so cool. So yeah. smart. Yeah. When he went rolling into sort of the uh, the shallow end of the water there, I felt at, like, okay, well, he'll, he's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. He's going to get his power. He's going to heal. And seeing that wave come up, you know, it just really showed him in this final leg of his journey becoming who we all knew he was going to be. Yeah. He, he said to Ares, which was a very badass line for him. He was like, I warned you, if you're not careful, you find out who I am. Oh my God. Like, what a line. Where does this kid get the chutzpah? Yeah. <laughs> what a line to say right before you, the wave comes in, it goes around Percy, which is just like so cool. It didn't need to, but it did. And just washes him away. He was like literally and figuratively just like jumbled. He was mm -hmm. like thrown out and then he was like, what? <laughs> okay, great. Sword gone. And then Percy comes in running, slices his ankle. Just so good. I loved, it was a quick fight, but it was really excellently done. Yeah, it was definitely effective. And I love seeing the golden blood mm -hmm. coming out of his heel. It's what I expected. It's what they gave us. And then, of course, you know, at the end of everything, him going into his real form. His true form. His true form, which I really wanted to see, even though it would make my brain explode. Also, they had to tell Percy, again, don't look at it. It's like, same thing with Medusa. They're like, turn, Percy, stop looking. <laughs> He's like, it's like, it's like looking at an eclipse. They're yeah. like, no, stop. <laughs> yeah. There aren't even special glasses for this. Why do you think that 
Ares. So he calls Percy calls Ares out for being manipulated by Kronos and using, you know, it's not his plan. It's Kronos's plan. And he's following through with that. Why do you think Ares said we don't gods don't dream? Is it because he was embarrassed or like, why do you think he said that? Because later on, Poseidon tells him, like, we obviously do. they yeah. do dream. I think it's, I think it's an embarrassment thing. And I also think maybe part of Ares did think that he was in control. And so having Percy, this child, be able to figure everything out and say it to his face made him feel like a fool. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Stupid. My granddad is the worst. Yeah. We don't dream. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't talk to me. Yeah, I, I thought I, I loved the acting in that part too, because you can see his face falter because he thought he had the upper hand and he was just like, I don't, gods don't dream. And it, you know, it, it was a sad line, but it was mm-hmm. also like, I do feel like there was a lot of embarrassment there. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things in watching Percy Jackson is seeing how demigods can affect gods. You think of gods as the almighty, you know, and the omnipotent, and and yet they can be deceived. They can be told off. They can be outsmarted. And so- And defeated. And defeated. And so he, it seems almost like a imbalance of power, but in reality, the gods are not all. No. And I think it goes back to the conversation that Luke and Percy have, and we finally know that Annabeth does have the fear of spiders because Mm -hmm. he tells him that, but it was such a smart way to deliver this line because he said, you know, the spider is tiny, but Annabeth will run away. And why is that? You're you're small, but you're so powerful. That big, powerful thing fears that thing. You can't be powerful and also be like feared of the thing. You know, it's just, yeah, it doesn't and, work. And the other aspect of that same or does you know, work, but, yeah. metaphor that Luke was giving him was that you also need to know what to go into the fight with because what will Annabeth do to the spider? She might smash it. So it's like you have to be the small thing and you have to be intimidating, but you can't cross the line. Well, you can't scare the thing. Right. Right. You can't be small and scary. Right. It was like what he told him. Yeah. It, it's, I think it's a really, fun way to look at this right because Mm. it's like don't you know be on the bad side of the demigods because look what even just percy a baby demigod was able to do Mm -hmm. granted he was part of the big three but as the series goes on you really get you get the picture of the demigods can be the best part of what these gods are and that scares them yeah well and and you figure the demigods have something that the gods don't and that is humanity Mm. And so there is beads. a power in that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the a, beads. A collection of beads and crystals. Yeah. <laughs> Camping. I really liked um, how they designed Hades helm because as soon as Ares goes, disappears, um, we get the helm. And I remember in the books that the helm, what it looks like before it's in its form is a ski mask. Mm-hmm. And I liked that the helm had like those cross lines on the eyes because it's like it could resemble a ski mask in a way, you know? Yeah. I like that. I like the little tiny detail. I also liked the the actors handling the helm where it seemed heavy. It seemed heavy. Mm-hmm. Right. And so th- I thought that was a really great detail of showing how, you know, if you think about it, Hades wears this on his head probably with ease, whereas, you know, other monsters and, and mortals, it, it takes some strength to lift it up. Yeah. I just, I want to, I would love a visual of J. Duplass. Wearing it, but still in his smoker's jacket. <laughs> exactly. And just this like giant thing. <laughs> you know, this Hades that we've been given in the last episode, I feel like that is a very real thing that could happen. Oh, yeah. Just sitting in his little living room, looking at his golden Sally, wearing his helmet, like, <laughs> okay, we're back in business, people. The set is complete. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they deliver the helm to Electo herself. Um, Megan Mullally fantastic as this character i love how she just shows up plays this like cool mysterious powerful fury and then disappears she's done it a few times in this and she's just a delight every single time i see yeah okay so one thing i had a question about or or i'm trying to piece it together so in the book might be the last time i say that this season probably not in the book 
when they smash their pearls down, it brings them back into California and then they have to take a plane across the way to mm -hmm. New York. What I'm putting together is, is that when they smash the pearl, even though they're on the other side of the country, it actually brings them on a beach in Montauk. Yeah, back to the parents right. or so, his mother's Montauk house. Yeah. Which I think is a really good way uh, to not have to create that point of we got to go on a plane. How are we going to get on a plane? Zeus is Lord of the Skies. Just like, no, just make them appear. Yeah. It's also, uh, but I even think the underlining meaning of that, right? And it's like, that's where it was going to bring them, like mm. back to his safe space you know back to something that means so important to his family mm -hmm. it's kind of nice yeah yeah um i liked seeing that montauk house i don't know where that is but i'd love yeah. to have that where montauk <laughs> is this gorgeous stained just, glass home just hidden yeah <laughs> we also hear on the radio when they come in and it's talking about you know the solar flares and everything and it's the real world consequences of the gods fighting mm -hmm. because again we know that zeus and poseidon are getting ready for war mm -hmm. and how he battled the sky was he created earthquakes and that's why electo had said that um it's really interesting to hear again from the mortal side because we didn't get too much mortal stuff these last couple episodes so it's interesting to kind of just get a little little checkup on all of them yeah the um after she leaves electo the jury has to split up and percy is going to go to mount olympus to deliver the bolt to talk to zeus and say um your dad is doing stuff it's not great but this goodbye that the trio does um very sweet you know this goodbye because who knows if percy's even going to make it back and just to see this really mature growth from annabeth that she gives him probably like her most prized possession aside from her hat and her dagger is her beads with the ring yeah her father's ring on it um, cause he'll need all the luck he can get. It's just really sweet. It's just like one of yeah. those moments where it's like, they are a thousand percent friends. Yes, they absolutely. Are there. They are definitely solidified as friends. Now there's no questioning it and there's no questioning each other. And I think a thing for Annabeth always as the daughter of Athena, it's about wisdom. It's about battling. It's about kind of looking at something and seeing the best way to solve the problem problem and she's seen percy throughout his entire journey figure out really wonderful ways to solve problems so just in that respect he's gotten her respect yeah and so i think that she can see him not only as a friend but really as a companion and someone she would travel with on another quest yeah and i love um grover's only contribution to this episode essentially is not anything against him it's grover right we love him is his um amazing one-liner and he says how sure are we that we can't just explain this in an email to them? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Zeus at mountolympus.com. I wonder if it is Zeus at gods.com. Or just like, gods. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Zeus at olympus.gods? That's, that's it. You know? That's it. Because it's not an org. It's the god, godly domain. They're, or domain. They're definitely not a nonprofit for sure. <laughs> no, no. And is it, it's not gov either. So I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We get to Olympus. This is one of the things that I was really excited to see because, you know, you always, you have all these images in your head and from past media and what you just expect or reading the books or anything. Um, I was so excited to see what this Olympus looked like. And I was again brought to the realization that like, I don't know, I think like the Hercules Disney really like muddled my mind with, with Olympus because it was beautiful. Mm. It was amazing. It was empty. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there. And it's gigantic. Mm -hmm. Like, even if there was people there, you would think that you would hear something or like see people in the background, but like there was nothing. Yeah. I, I was blown away because I'm thinking, oh, he's in a building. It's going to open up and it's going to be a corridor, but the elevator doors open and it's an entire land. It's a place. Yeah. Uh, so that idea kind of blew my mind a little bit. But yeah, I agree. Even when he finally gets to Zeus, you know, Zeus is completely by himself. I guess that's what happens when you create a war. Yeah. And and then I guess your your fellow gods are choosing sides and getting their own followers together. And it's mayhem. But just seeing Zeus, you know, who is the god of gods, just forlornly sitting. Forlorn. 
in this throne. It was mm-hmm. really just such an interesting scene, I think, for Percy to walk on. Also, like, you would think that, I mean, I guess they're gods, right? And, like, we see Zeus teleport, but I just love the thing of, like, Percy having to literally walk 10 miles up to Oh, yeah. Top. You know, Zeus, <laughs> Zeus knew he was there. He's like, I'm not moving. <laughs> Zeus is literally sitting there like, okay, child. Like, I'm going to go eat. I'll, I'll yeah. be back. Percy's just like, I have your master bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, it was like four days had passed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like camp. <laughs> Everyone's at camp is just like, is Percy okay? I think What's... he's dead. Oh my God. They ate him on Olympus. <laughs> <laughs> they ate him. <laughs> they ate him. <laughs> but I, I loved the look of Olympus and I liked it whenever they got to the top. Right. And it's like, you see the thrones, all the thrones of the other gods that are supposed to be there. It's very dark and gloomy. Mm. And because obviously Zeus is like brewing in something and he's preparing for war. But the image of Lance Reddick mm. sitting on that throne, um, last performance by the amazing. I mean, he just look up his history of everything he's been in. You have seen him before this, or you have heard his voice, video games, animated stuff, movies, everything. Yeah. Um, very missed. But holy shit knocked it out of the park yeah as zeus i was terrified Mm -hmm. i felt humbled because i was just like he seems like a good guy no yes and just scary right man looks good in a suit the power his tie did you notice that it was like a paisley pattern but it wasn't a traditional right easy plan it was just like kind of however it wanted to be oh just so good yeah man amazing yeah it was awesome you know this Looking at the background, especially when you were looking behind Percy when he is at the top of the mountain, it actually reminded me a lot of the underworld. Mm. It felt very much the same of this vast land where there was just like clouds and and mist. And it seems like maybe there isn't such a difference between being up in the sky and being below. I mean, I think that's what Hades wants people to think, but Mm -hmm. they want him to think otherwise, right? It's Mm -hmm. like Hades is always seen as the person that got the short end of the stick, Mm -hmm. even though like he's one of the only ones of the God that literally has a whole domain that he governs. It's, it's such an interesting, like once you really look into it and then Zeus is there, but also nobody is there. Well, right. And, and that's another thing is that like, we again, see that how these gods are, they they don't see Percy as a 12-year-old. Mm. They see him as a demigod. And also as a nuisance. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, watching this, you know, I mean, ancient being scream at a child. <laughs> the, the conversation that they have, I think, is really interesting. It, it drives the theme of the series, or at least the first one, really home, right? Because um, Percy... Him delivering the bolt, right? And when mm-hmm. he delivered it to him, just hearing that crack of thunder or hearing the rumbles of thunder, depending on his emotion, amazing. I wish I could do that. Like people could know like <laughs> what's happening. Um, it's amazing. But he tries to talk to him and he tells him, he's like, you failed. He just flat out tells him, you failed is mm-hmm. one of the first things that Zeus tells him. And what does Percy do? I know. But I had to come here and talk to you and tell you this. It's such a, an amazing thing for a character like this, right? This is the, the growth and like what we want these characters to do. And for him to try to tell him like Kronos is doing this, he's plotting, he's coming back. And he's like, yeah, uh, I know. He did look scared. I feel like it's almost like a front because maybe, just maybe, you're wasting your time with Poseidon when you should really be looking at what is actually happening. Like, why would Percy be lying to you? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like he's a baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think there is sort of a piece of Percy here that doesn't necessarily know what's going to happen in this moment. Is Zeus going to fry him? Is Zeus uh, going to let him go? And we almost get that, right? Yeah. yeah. I love the line that um, he says. When he's like, we do this. Gods do this. We snap. We plot. We strive. Oh, so good. Mm. so so good he tells him boy when he yells boy at him i was just like 
Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'm You're sorry. Right. I'm a boy. We're all boys. I'm just going to go make my 10 day journey back down. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. You I'm going to leave this here. Yeah. And I'm going to go. <laughs> Bye. You, you, you can have this. You can have this back. But see, daddy does come to the rescue. Yes. Oh, it's such an important moment, right? It's like this is Percy has never met his father that he knows mm. of, right? He's been in the vicinity of him, but he's never met him. And it's like, this is the thing that like, he was on this quest to prove himself to save his mother. And you, you have to know that like he wanted to make his dad proud or right. meet his dad in yeah. some capacity um, for him to save him and then immediately surrender. Well, Ugh. I was going to ask, what do you think the significance? So, because in the book, I guess that wasn't the last time I was going to say it. Yep. In, in the book, this war hasn't started, right? right? Between Zeus and Poseidon. It's, go, it's brewing. Right. right. But here it has happened. The solstice has passed. It has happened. So what do you think the significance of having Poseidon look at his brother and say, I surrender? I, it's huge, right? Because, I mean, these two particularly, Hades included or excluded, however you want to think about it, are always vying for power, right? It's like Poseidon could be in Zeus's place, but Zeus is the one that defeated Kronos and put him in his place. So he's there. Um, I think it's good for Percy to see that. And it's Mm -hmm. good for Poseidon and it's good for us to understand that he has a complicated relationship with like fathering demigods and like what that exactly means. Um, It's good, right? Because then it also like kind of stops the war. Right. So we are at the place in the book. We needed that to happen. Right. We needed to stop the war. And I also think it shows Percy that, wow, he, this is my father. Yes, he's been absent, but he does actually care about me Mm -hmm. because he's willing to kowtow to his brother. And like you said, who have always been at a head to head battle. Yeah. And he told Sally in that flashback that we saw, he was like, when the time comes, I will be by his side. I mean, he did it. Yeah, I mean, the the Master Bolt was charged up. It was glowing blue. That Master Bolt, like, I know we've seen it on the promotional stuff, but to see it in, like, action and to, like, really get a close-up look, especially, like, where the hilt is, and you can see those, like, small arcing of electricity. Oh, it looks so cool. They it, did such a good job with yeah. the design of this. If, like, in the last episode, we've been talking, we were talking about if they do make a Percy Jackson land or something like that, <laughs> there has to be like a giant master bolt that you can hold. And when you hold it, it like lights up. <gasps> Ooh, that'd be cool, right? Get on it, Disney. We're Imagineers now. <laughs> we imagine everything at Disney. <laughs> Blue food, lightning bolts. We got it. <laughs> the, uh, make your own necklace yeah. station. Oh, come on. I would love that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, it's probably going to be the same, like same ones, but you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I want to I beat a necklace. That's cool. I'm sure you could buy them. Etsy. Mm. Get on it. Yeah. Someone's making those clay beads right now. <laughs> For like 10 years, probably. Yeah, right? that's true. <laughs> okay. So Percy and his dad finally get to meet and have a conversation. Um, I love that. He, the first thing he says to him is like, you know, the, the sea does not like to be restrained. He's like, you're stubborn, aren't you? He's like, yeah, I'm like you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's such a brief and short meeting. And when he finally like makes Percy go away, right. You can see in his face that when he's going to make him leave, Percy is like devastated. Yeah. Cause he's like, I How is this it did all of this. Also, I'm asking you if you care about my mother. And you're avoiding the question and you're sending me away. What is it? Uh, Why can't Poseidon admit that he loves them and that he cares for them? I think it's too much, right? It's like, yeah, you made the decision to be with somebody and you had a child and there was a pact that was made to where you couldn't have any children. You did anyway. You obviously loved this woman. Loved this person, yeah. Um, Maybe it's a weakness. Maybe it's just... He has other priorities. I, I'm not or, sure how this series version feels mm-hmm. about it, right? I wonder if it's even something to say of if he shows that he loves them and that he cares for them, he's putting a target on their backs. That's also a huge thing that's probably happening because he, he asks, he's like, do you, ever, do you dream? Yes, God's dream. Do you ever dream of mom? Okay, bye-bye. She sits in the rain for you. Yeah, go. PP, you need to go away. Oh. <laughs> you just need to go. I, you know, there was that moment when he calls him Perseus, mm-hmm. right? It, it felt very... Dad. Dad-like, mm-hmm. you know, 
Percy is Jackson. Also fair though. Like you don't know him. You can't call him by Percy. Mm. You call me by my government name. Right. <laughs> you have not gotten to know me. <laughs> right. Totally. Totally. It's, it's a very sweet, it satisfied what I wanted them to meet right because it, it still has some mystery mm-hmm. it still has that like feeling of longing almost like oh, i want them to like talk more and like stop being idiots just like talk um but you know there's going to be more seasons so it's there we yeah. made some go away i think <laughs> that we got that moment it i think gave percy a little more closure Mm -hmm. and knowing who his father is and knowing that his father does care at least enough to like end a war yeah and have zeus throw a party and gloat it in his face yeah yeah so i i I don't think that any of that is lost on percy no i think he wanted more time but you know i guess out of 12 years of being on the earth if these two and a half minutes is all he gets then maybe that's enough for now no but fine don't for Percy. Excuse. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. I'm not saying in yeah. life. I mean, he's just a deadbeat dad. We've been saying that all season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go that far, right? I think ever since the flashback, I've given him a little more leniency because you could tell that he wants to be involved. He just can't. Now who's on whose side? I mean, you know, <laughs> on everybody's side. <laughs> I can make an argument for everybody. That is very true. I live with you. I understand that very well. I mean, my favorite character is like Hades. So like (laughs) playing devil's advocate here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So before we get into like the camp and the betrayal and everything, how did you feel about this finale from the series? You know, like as a finale, how did you feel about it? I think it did the job of what a finale is supposed to do. I think that we got some really good fights. I think that it brought some closure to our parental relationship. And I think it also left us with a big question mark for next season. Um, And there was a twist. Right. You you can never deny a twist. Well, you can. I think we love a twist. Oh, yeah. No, we love a twist. The world loves a twist. Yeah, we love a twist. I I really liked it. I I felt like it was brisk and there was a lot to unpack um, for the season to get it ready for the next stuff. I do feel like... Knowing the next books, I feel like it's going to be able to breathe and play a little more, right? Because the the first season's really setting up the entire world and the mythos of everything. Mm. And so now that we're there, we have that base, I feel like they can play a little more. I really hope that we get longer episodes next season because they're very short. Mm -hmm. Granted, we got eight. They just did feel a little short because it was like, okay, the Ares fight was like five minutes and then this thing, and it was like a lot happens, yeah. but I wanted to breathe a little more in those. Well, we did talk about that. We were like, how are they going to fit all of this into the final episode? And they did. They fit it in they there, did. but it did have to be quick sort of, you know, chapters, mm-hmm. right? Very much like in a book. But I think that this first season does what exactly what the first book did in that it made you get to know these characters. You fall in love with them. You want to see more. And we had to build up those first foundational things of getting to know them, seeing what they're capable of, and now wanting more for them. Right. Right. So I think it does achieve that. Yeah. And and I think a lot has to happen in order for that to happen, though. And so maybe that's why a lot of the things seemed a little quick. It was because we had to get it all in there in order for us to believe it and and want better for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I, I agree. I, I just felt like it was brisk, right? It's like 30 minute episodes and like, mm, it's very short. We're like seven minute credits. Yeah. And, and not that extreme, but you right. know what I mean? <laughs> but I do have to say in thinking of the Aries fight, it's like, I don't know if that fight went on any longer. I don't think Percy would have won. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? He could have just dragged Aries into the ocean and then like, <laughs> you know, I agree. And like, I feel like that's probably why. It is the way it is, especially in like the first book and Mm. in this first season that like we have to remember they're kids. And I know one of the critiques, I saw some critiques, which I don't agree with, is like, it's easy. Like this is like it's the kids are solving all this stuff. It's easy. It's like, well, they're kids, right? It's like not until they get older do the problems get more intricate because Mm. I think you had said this when we were talking about it, but it's like it wouldn't be believable if it was like. 
problems or things that like adults, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it, it has to be believable to yeah. an extent. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I think that is what I said. And it's just like, I don't know if they had to solve like giant equations or crazy puzzles. It was like. Annabeth can. Sure. But, you know, when they were down in the underworld, she was back up already. So yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't have been there to help him. I just think that things. Do you see how he played both sides? He said he agreed with me. And then I was bringing up an example. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I can make an argument for all sides, including yes. all sides of myself. Yes, exactly. What are we, I, I was agreeing with you. Um, but yeah, that, that's the thing is that I think the, pro, the, the size of the problems were the right size for 12 year olds. As they get taller, the problems get taller. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Okay. To camp. Um, like, nice little hero's welcome. Mm -hmm. It was interesting at first when you, you didn't hear anything, you didn't hear the cheering, but you saw it and it was kind of, it felt somber at first. Mm. And then it seemed like he was like enjoying it. And I don't know if that was like, he didn't expect it. Um, but it was really sweet to see him get this like hero's welcome and everything. And then Annabeth coming and hugging him was very sweet and something that I think all of us that love this series wanted and needed we needed to see that hug. The tiny little flames of Persebeth are still there. But and the, then Clarice. Yes. This, <laughs> so this hug was really felt more like an espionage move of like, everyone thinks I'm hugging to congratulate you, but don't look over there because she's still there. We're all very confused. Yeah. <laughs> Whispering in his ear yeah. about Clarice. <laughs> so at this point, do you think that Clarice knows anything? No, mm -hmm. but Aries said that you've made an enemy for life. And Ares' cabin, being the descendants of Ares, clearly are on his side, right? right they want right. to appease the dad and everything, because you could see all the other kids cracking their little tiny knuckles next to Clarice. <laughs> Ooh, they are angry. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get more of Clarice. She, Same. She has a bigger part in the next book, and I'm very excited to see that character get more time to shine. Um, there's a lot of characters that I just kind of want more of, but I love that we got to sit with these three to love them more mm -hmm. and to get to know them. But Clarice, man, I want more of her. I agree. Oh, She's so fierce. She's so cool. Yeah. Um, I, Luke. Okay, let's get into the betrayal of it all. Luke planning with Annabeth to separate Percy away from everybody. Talk to Chiron. Just this dude is sneaky, yeah. so sneaky and so smooth because Annabeth, and I think it's just because of her relationship with Luke, she didn't see anything, but very smart on yeah. his part. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, when we're thinking about those flashbacks at the beginning of the episode and we're watching it and going, oh, wow, he was training him for this quest. But in reality, he was training him to be on his side. Yeah. And I'm, giving him the tools so that he would hopefully join him. That's the thing that I really like and I think is smart about this. Because it's not just, you know, somebody that you call friend shall betray you in the end and stuff like that. It, it's more than that. Like, yes, he did betray him because he's working with Kronos. But it's like he sees him as somebody that can help him mm -hmm. in what he's trying to do. So he, like, wants him to be an ally for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. But, like... It's almost like a, I'd be flattered almost. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it sucks that my friend tried to like kill me kind of or betray <laughs> me. But like, as we hear from Chiron, he's like, he sees you as somebody that could be his ally, mm. not necessarily wanting to kill you yet. <laughs> Thank you for the offer. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to take you up on it. I'm not going to take Kronos aside. Thank you. But I loved the setting of this betrayal. So cool. Mm. Visually amazing in the woods. There could be monsters around, but just all these fireworks and everything. So you got that light. It's just, it looked amazing. And then Percy breaking down the prophecy line by line. And then he's like, everything's come true. Except for one thing. And he's like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got there. <laughs> Poor Percy. Yeah, he got there. <laughs> you know, one thing that I do wish that they explained was the double edge of Backbiter. They didn't explain it. They do in the books. Right, they, they do. But also, like, the ability to create a portal, freaking amazing. Also very cool. So, just to explain it from what I'm assuming is still going to be the thing, I don't know if they're just making it to where it can do portals and not the other thing. Mm. And maybe that's why they didn't explain it. But in the books, 
The reason why it's two different colors is because one color kills monsters. So the celestial bronze that these demigods have can't hurt mortals. Which is Riptide. Like right. Riptide is a celestial bronze. If you try to hit a mortal, it will go right through them. Mm-hmm. It can only damage monsters and other godly beings. The other color, the other blade or metal that's on Luke's sword can kill and hurt mortals. Um, right. So that just kind of adds a little more to the, oh no. And it, and because it, it always felt like, what is going on with the gods and the demigods is outside the realm of the mortals. So the fact that he has something that can kill anyone that can get in his way makes him feel more dangerous. I'm really, I'm really interesting to see because I know there's, there's a couple things that where mortals get involved later on in the series, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, and it involves some of the stuff that's happening and it's kind of like awful stuff. Um, so I'm curious if, they're going to pull back on that mm. um, for whatever reason. Um, but it's um, kind of not great that he's like, oh, let me make a sword that could kill mortals. <laughs> yeah. That reading that in the book scared me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it painted Luke in a, a sadder and also scarier light at the same time. Yeah. But adding the layer of Annabeth saving him coming out of there. So you kind of may, maybe, this is what I'm thinking. Like at first I was like, why did she follow them? Like she seemed like she was like so in on this plan. Maybe she saw Chiron <laughs> right like, at camp and was like, are you going to, are you like on your way to talk to Luke? And he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And she's like, oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, and this, uh, this mirrors the capture the flag scene where she's standing there watching. And, you know, I had a thought and this might be out of, you know, a little reaching, but when you and I were watching the fight between Luke and Percy, we were said, someone's in the background, someone's in the background. But then we thought, oh, it's just a statue. I was actually thinking, maybe it's a statue of Athena. And the thought that Athena is always watching. And that's Annabeth. Oh, that is true. Because like, I think at first I was like, oh, like they're in the woods and they kind of like fill the woods with monsters and stuff so they can practice. But like when we saw it, it was like, what is that? Like it is yeah. a statue, Because it right? felt like they were, they were surrounded by you know, like columns and, right. you know, it, it felt very, very, um, like, you know, ancient Greek ruins. Right. Right. And so I was like, oh, that statue was so prominent between mm-hmm. them. And then I was thinking, you know, maybe there's some poetry in there that it's a statue of Athena and Annabeth is there to protect it. Oh, that would be cool. Well, I like that. All right. If it's not a bite hope, of approved, I hope it is. <laughs> um, but I do like the, um, the callback to the capture of the flag. Where like when he defeated Clarice and she was there invisible the whole time, he's like, you just stood there and did nothing. This time she did do something Mm -hmm. and it saved his life. Uh, Just really cool. But I also like that layer because it, it doesn't have like their relationship isn't going to be strained or she's not going to second guess him because he's the only one that, you know, Luke betrayed him and like he was the only one that was there. So now she can back him up and also their relationship is fine because she doesn't have to second guess that. Right. Which I like. I like that change. Yeah. In it. Yeah. And so Luke cuts a portal and he goes. Oh, it looks so cool. I wonder if like he had, he has to do that motion every time or if like, is he going to Hades? He made an H or it's like, that's how he opens the portal. I was curious by the the markings that he did. That's a good question. Um, Yeah. Because it was an H. Unless it's like, For <laughs> it's a portal. Get me the hell out of here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> or H for Hades. Cause he's like, he's throwing a potty. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. So Luke, unfortunately turns out, although he was quite wonderful throughout, really had his own agenda. I want to know. So if anybody's listening to this and had never read the book, and this is the first experience you're having with Percy Jackson, did you have a feeling that Luke was bad? Or was going to betray him. Like, I'm curious because we knew already. So, like, we could see that it was happening. I did feel like they did a good job of hiding it. Yes. But I'm curious if you didn't know. Did you have an inkling or did they hide it well? So, let us know. I just had an idea. Yeah. H is for Hermes because he is the child of Hermes who can travel. Oh. Can he travel by portal? Hermes travels like that. Oh, yeah. He's fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. (sighs) That makes sense. I guess Hades isn't the only god with H <laughs> <laughs> in his name. It's H oh, for Hephaestus. Man, when, oh God, there's another one with H. <laughs> there are, I think there's another one too. Who's the goddess of the hearth? Oh. Uh, you, 
She's pretty big. In the books, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> guys, like sometimes some details just escape me. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of God with H's. Yeah. Um, when he mentioned, when Percy mentioned to Luke and what set him off in fighting was when he was like, I talked to your dad. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't mention my dad. I like that detail, but it's also very sad. Mm. And he's like, they, Hermes and both Luke feel that way about each other that they just don't like to talk about it. And it's yeah. like, just talk about it. Like, t- talk to each other. Talk to your father. Which talk obviously to your is son. very hard for all of them. To yeah. Do. <laughs> A lot of parental issues yeah. in this series. Oh. I'm stalling so that we're the end. We've been doing Percy Jackson since November. Yeah, we figure, right? I think we did the book in four episodes. Which then was we, like all of November. And then we did like a sort of a before you watch episode with all the great interviews that we got to be a part of. It's been a couple months. So and, this is a long journey. And this is February eight, coming eight up. Eight episodes of yeah. just the show. Yeah. So yeah, 13 weeks. Yeah, we've and a, and a lot has happened in those thirteen weeks. A lot has happened. There's yeah. quite a few things that like we've been watching and doing stuff, but didn't really talk about on here. And it's just all been Percy Jackson. So um, if you want, I'm curious, what do you guys want us to do next? Mm. Let us know. Yeah. Also, so tell us below those all those things. Did you think Luke was bad? And also, what do you want us to talk about? We're putting you guys to work. Damn it! Comment below. <laughs> Give us the stars. <laughs> all right. So moving on. Leaving camp. Mm -hmm. I love scenes where like it's the end of a story and you know, there's more that like the friends or the group or whatever has to like, we're going to meet back here this time next year. We have to promise each other that we'll always be there for each other. It's so good. Percy having his first bead on his necklace. It's so good. Having that final conversation with Kyron kind of looping it all back when he first got there. Mr. D making a perform or an appearance, still not knowing his name being freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I loved it. I wanted more Mr. D. Yeah, I wanted more Mr. D too. Um, and of course, we have, we see Annabeth kind of saying goodbye to Thalia mm-hmm. Grover with his beautiful uh, flower. He's a searcher. He's I a lo- searcher. I love that. Like, because I think like it's just like you're told you're a searcher, right? They could probably actually have licenses or whatever. But I remember for the first time, I was like, what is their license? Now we know it's an amazing, just beautiful little flower that's on there. I, does it wilt? Does it always stay? Does he have to water it? Do you have to keep this license alive? <laughs> well, maybe, right? It shows yeah. that you're an advanced, you know, searcher. You're an advanced uh, gardener and you have to keep it going. <laughs> you're an advanced gardener. Is what he that. is an advanced gardener. <laughs> Let's not forget when Percy went to tell him that he would be on the quest with him. What was he doing? What? He was in the field. He was, oh. <laughs> he was farming. Yeah, that's true. I just like how it's like you're a searcher, also an advanced gardener now. <laughs> you have to show that you know all aspects of being one with nature. Yeah. Oh, so good. So they say goodbye and he's like, let's meet here this time next year. Um, Annabeth gets to go to Disney World with his da- her dad and they're going to make it work. They're going to at least try, right? Which I think is a huge step for her and her family. Um, her freaking out about what is Disney World yeah. and what's going to happen is so good. And also he just, sad. He just tells her to just be a kid. Yeah. Just have fun. You should. Mm-hmm. You don't know any of the Wizard of Oz or movie references that I'm saying. Can you, for the love of God, please just be a kid? You need to. Take I wonder care. How, how is that going to be for her, though? When she go to Disney World. Like, she's not. <laughs> she's going to be on It's a Small World chopping the heads off of all the puppets. <laughs> Just because she wants to see how they work, not because she feels that they're dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I would gladly let her do that on that ride. I can't stand. I love that ride. I know you do. It's, I don't, like, I'm glad you do. It's just, I wouldn't think that that would be your favorite ride. It's so fun. Really? Yes. I love it. It's just so wholesome and delightful. It doesn't like all of the different puppets. They're drive so you happy. crazy? No. I'm just always like, look at that one. Look at that one. And then they sneak. Like Lilo and Stitch in. It's so fun. What? Yeah, Lilo's in it now. Oh, I never saw that. Yeah, they oh. put the, some of the characters in from the different places. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, now I'll go on it. Yay. Just to see if I could see the other. Otherwise, group. it would have just been me by myself. It's a small one. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like she needs the, like a crash, cor- crash course on like the major Disney stuff so that way she'll get the references and stuff. I mean, I'm sure she'd be amazed, right? It's just amazing. And like she was, you know, 
doe-eyed at the run-down water park. She's going to be amazed Yeah, at Disney World. I love, also love that it was Disney World. They're like, this is a Disney property. They're going to Disney World, not Bush Gardens. <laughs> no, they're not going to Six Flags Great no. Adventure. <laughs> I admit I got duped when it was like him meeting his mom back at the Montauk house. I was like, oh, yay. I'm curious because we know that that's Kronos, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, you let's see if you survive what's going to come. And like, you should have gone away when I told you to. It's just like the big bad toying with the hero of the story, right? Um, and apparently he's been plaguing his dreams for a while. But I'm curious if like we didn't actually get to see the reunion between Sally and Percy. But I wonder if that was the reunion. Mm-hmm. And he's just reliving it, but then it's just changed. Yeah, I was thinking that too, because we deserve to see that reunion. And so if that little snippet in the beginning before, you know, she turns uh, is is what it was, I'm I'm happy with that. Yeah. I like the line that he says, it's like, your survival is key to my return. And it's mm-hmm. like, ooh, mystery. Uh-oh, mm-hmm. now we're in trouble. Um, one of the coolest things to see Percy and Sally is that they keep like a grandpa dream journal. A dream journal. Yeah. <laughs> What did he say now? Yeah. What threats did he have for my child this time? And then Percy just being like, just tell your mom you love her sometime. I'm like, you little stinker. Yeah. And she's like, this is serious. Yeah. <laughs> this man wants to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Enough but, of your cute games. But it's really sweet, right? It's like they they overcame a lot of stuff. She's back. She gets to make him blue pancakes before he goes off to seventh grade. So it's like starting over again. But he has a place that he can go to where... He can be himself. He just has Mm. to like go to shitty public school and then get to go to do the fun stuff. Yeah. But it does seem like their house is a little warmer and brighter and a little more love in there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's fun to see. I admit, I admit that I was hoping that there would be a character that is in the next story show up because I guarantee you if when there is a second season and they go downstairs, we're going to see that character. But I was like, Tyson. If Tyson shows up, I'm going to lose my mind. Did not. Show he up. did not show up. It's yeah, fine. You know, we did have that appearance of Kronos, which really kind of alludes to things to come, but it didn't give us any sort of cliffhanger thing or introduction of someone or a last minute surprise. Well, Cause that's like the greater right mystery mm-hmm. of it. It's like, this is like the big bad coming back. So it's like, it's not going to be immediate, right? This is a building thing. We just want to see our characters that we love mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now. Um, speaking of characters we love to if, hate, <laughs> if you stayed till after the first round of credits, you get to see, cause this is what, this is a question we had in the beginning, the first episode. And also when we read the books was they, in the show, it wasn't clear, or at least it, Percy didn't put it together that Gabe also physically abused mm. his mother. And we had the question or the conversation of like, Okay, we know that he gets turned to stone at the end of this. Is that going to happen in here? Because would they show that? You know what I mean? Like, did he do enough? Which I think he did, right? He's a piece of shit. But like, was he, did he do enough to die? Essentially, you know, I'm glad he did because I love seeing it. (laughs) In the book, the way it was painted is that it felt like Sally finally fought back right. and turned and used the head to turn to stone. Whereas in this, it, it felt like he was, Nosy. He, it was the consequences <laughs> of his own, uh, once again, annoying actions. Right. Right. Uh, so he kind of sealed his own fate, which I kind of liked, right? It's like, I guess don't put that on Sally, mm-hmm. right? Like don't make her have that because like she went to school and she tried and everything. And then she finally left the head on the, the thing for him to see. And then he got turned to stone and mm-hmm. then, she sold his statue. Amazing. Um, badass. Um, I don't know if that would translate too well. Right. It's like she's going to kill him and then like sell his body to <laughs> make money and then start writing. I, yeah. I'm hoping that in the next season, they just use him as a coat rack or yeah. something in the apartment. <laughs> Cause what are they going to do with that? Nothing. It's just going to be gone. <laughs> They're going to go put it in Medusa's garden. Gnome Emporium. That makes sense. It's in New Jersey. It's not yeah. that far away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, before you go, you go, you, you're bye. Um, Before (laughs) we go, we like to kind of say some of our favorite things, right? From the season. Um, I have to ask you, I have one thing that I really want to ask. 
Who is your favorite monster? This whole season. Okay, so it's it's a bit of a toss up. Mm. Okay, so my favorite monster parentheses comedy category is the Minotaur <laughs> because Tidy Whitey's right, right, obviously. Right, right, right. My favorite monster parentheses backstory category is Medusa. Mm. Yeah, she, she was the most fleshed out of all of the monsters, the one that we got to really know, um, and I thought that it was really really done well. Is she a monster, though? Some might say she is. <laughs> Some might say she is. I I think, like, I think we're going to share that with a lot of people, right? I think Medusa was just beautifully done. Um, the actor, the story, everything was fantastic. Um, I think the Chimera was my favorite, mm. like, monster. I think that Chimera was beautiful. I just loved how terrifying it was. I loved the, like, juxtaposition between, like, this, like, amalgamation of terrifying creatures and then echidna who look like could be like a school counselor right next to it i just loved that mm-hmm. right and that's like it like that image alone is like that's why i like percy jackson it's like putting these two things together um just my favorite i think that's also one of my favorite episodes so ah uh, the chimera i yeah. hope you're okay <laughs> the whole the whole echidna chase scene was pretty fantastic yeah uh, and watching her, you know, blast into the train and then blame it on them. It was a very strong episode for sure. Oh, we so also good. found out about those elevator capsules that go up in the arc. <laughs> we had, um, thank you for the people that <laughs> told me like those capsules have always been there and actually showed me pictures. Um, thank you for that because I do not remember that at all, mm. which I think we have to go back and do it, um, to actually see them. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's go to St. Louis just to go in there yes! and be like, the capsules are real (laughs) just being percy jackson going all the way up um but thank you for uh (laughs) yeah thank you to our listeners for always doing the research for us (laughs) (laughs) okay that's it that's percy jackson um so much fun highly recommend i feel a little i feel like forlorn i feel sad Mm. we've been living in this really wonderful magical world we've gotten some uh we've had some wonderful conversations with people including our listeners so it feels a We've little made a few friends. Yeah. We've got some great ex- experiences. Wonderful show. Oh, you know, one door closes, another one opens into Argo. Yes. <laughs> it's more mayhem and adventure. The absurd world of Argyle. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with that cat. I'm I, obsessed with that cat. I can't wait for you guys to see that movie. Um, yeah. If you like Matthew Vaughn, you're going to really enjoy that movie. Absolutely. Um, so much fun. Oh, okay. Well, until when this comes out, there's like two days and then you guys get to see us again. So see you in a couple days. See you folks. Bye. Bye.